My name is Sarah Stover, and I am the daughter of Barbara Stover. Before I realized how sick my mom was, we did not have the best relationship. My home life didn't allow for much, and I didn't have a lot of support in a lot of different areas growing up. I have a lot of regrets of the relationship that I had with my mom, and I wish I could go back and um, have a better relationship with her. It was the summer after my eighth grade year. I had come home from a church camp, and when my mom opened the door, she had fallen on the ground, and I had no idea what was going on. Within the next couple of months, she had several different episodes where she fell for no reason, whether it be falling up the driveway or falling just around the house. And the doctors came to the conclusion that maybe she has kidney failure. They linked it back to medication she had been on several years ago that played a, played a part on her damaging her kidneys. So with that, they didn't really know at first, they thought, oh, she's doing it for attention, and they put her on the wrong floor of the hospital to where they just let her lay there and essentially die. This is where the doctor found her unresponsive and demanded that she go to the ICU. Um, this is where she had to be revived and this is where it all started, where she had to learn how to walk and talk and eat and breathe and everything all over again. When I realized how sick she truly was, I gained a sense of understanding for my mom's struggles, um, whether it be physically, mentally, emotionally, and I gained a sense of compassion and really wanted to, in a sense, save her life. With my mom's kidney failure, her kidneys were never functioning so low to where she needed dialysis, but because of the low percent that they were functioning at, it did play a toll on the rest of her body. She needed a colostomy bag, a tracheotomy. My mother passed away October 29th, 2014 at Memorial Hospital. She was on life support for five days, but she was brain dead. Um, she had several respiratory or cardiac arrests throughout that time, and she was basically in a vegetative state, so we had to make the decision as a family to take her off life support. We knew that was a life that she did not want to live. So I was in the room when my mom took her um, last couple breaths. When they took her, and pronounced her dead, it seemed like I was losing my mind essentially, like I was going crazy. I lost my mother and now I lost my life. I felt empty. I felt like my whole life, my whole world had been taken from me. My mom was lovable. I would always say she was a saint on earth and now she's an angel in heaven. got so sick, she would hold me, I would say, uppy, uppy, mommy, I would raise my arms up, and I would say, uppy, mommy, and she would, she would hold me, and I would not, I would save her hair, and I would say, she was starting to get gray hair, because she had me when she was 40, and I would say, ma, you got milk in your hair, so her gray hair, I thought, was milk. Um, when I had stomach aches, I would go sit on her lap, and she would hold me, and we would put our stomachs together and we would say tummy to tummy, and um, just like her love and warmth um, just kind of like always made me feel better. Although I wish I would have had more time with my mother, I am very grateful for the years that we were able to spend together. My mother passed when I was a senior in high school, so since then, some of my accomplishments have included graduating high school, attending a community college to receive my associate's degree. I am now continuing my education at Illinois State University, majoring in special education, 
If I turn into my mother, or even half the woman she was, I'll consider my life a successful one.